So tonight we're cooking an anti-pasti banchan party. We're gonna make a bunch of different appetizers, things to snack on. We're gonna do my version of corn cheese, which reminds me kind of of eating box mac and cheese as a kid, but it's gonna be a really nice roasted corn with some pan-fried mortadella. We're going to do mozzarella and carrozza with bagna cauda. If like mozzarella sticks and grilled cheese had a baby. All right, we're here at Best Sicily, which is like one of my favorite places to go to. I mean, I'm gonna talk to Sylvia, see what she's got. Ciao. Ciao, hello. <laughs> How are you? Good, and you? Good, good, good. They deal mainly, ex almost exclusively in Sicilian products. I get my olive oil from them. We're gonna pick up some olives today, just some stuff for antipasti. I wasn't hungry, and now I'm hungry. <laughs> What else is your favorite thing here, would you say right now, that you're doing? The arancine, the yeah. focaccia, we do the focaccia with prosciutto, fresh prosciutto. And you make all of that stuff here? Yes. It's like, that's crazy. So this is so special. I want to talk to you about antipasti. From your perspective, mm -hmm. in Sicily, what does this look like? Antipasti for us is just like you put on the table and you start to eat before, to, before the dinner. You can take the olives, the caponata, and we have almonds, the Sicilian almonds. So I'll get some of those and then I'm gonna get, I need a lot of olive oil. So I'm gonna be cooking like multiple recipes. Yes, I'm gonna get the, their campanata because I wanna just compare. And then the artichokes. Danny, try one of the strawberries. Oh yes, please. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Whoa, this is crazy. Thank you. Hey man, hey. what's up? How are you? How are you? Good to see you, Good man. to see you, yeah. Congrats you? also, it's, yeah. I mean. Hello. If you ate something right now, what would you eat? Prosciutto mozzarella. Let's try, can we try one? Oh my gosh, look at that. That looks incredible, dude. Oh my God, it smells amazing. Is there a little bechamel in here? Yeah. This is insane. Is it? It's so good, yeah. Oh. This is my favorite. All right, see you guys. Ciao. So I'm going to be cooking like an antipasti banchan like mashup. And you know, I wanted to come here to a little banchan shop. It's run by a good friend of mine, someone that's very inspiring to me, the chef Huni Kim. Some of the best things about the pre-made banchan that you can get, I always like to pair it with stuff that's hot coming out of the dome. So I might make like a corn cheese with a pan-fried crispy mortadella and like pair that with white kimchi. So the acid from the white kimchi cuts the fat and richness in the corn cheese. How many banchans do you make here? Because it seems like a lot. Our recipe book has about 90, 95. And I'm sure it rotates seasonally, right? Seasonally, what's in the market, well, I'm gonna grab a few yeah, of my favorite things. I definitely think potato salad for sure. I mean, the spicy fish cake is always. And then we'll get some watercress for sure. We'll get some white kimchi. Okay. So the difference between white kimchi and the Napa cabbage kimchi is the, I'm assuming it's just the, gochi, the inclusion of gochugaru. Plus uh, a lot of pear puree, a okay. lot of pear puree. It's pretty much 80% pear puree that actually sweetens the white kimchi. And I think that's why children like it a little bit more than the red, because it tends to be a little bit sweet. Yeah. Um, and it's also the liquid. It's almost like a pickling, sweet pickling liquid. Yeah. It's so good. Also, the rice here is very good. Like When I come here, I'm like, oh, this tastes like home-cooked rice, which I think is a compliment, right? I, mean, I noticed the white kimchi just makes you hungry. Yeah. <laughs> makes you more hungry. Get to eat more, it's dangerous. No, this is perfect. Oh my gosh, this is so good. And I can see, you can taste the age. It's not like super sour, it's mellow, but bright. The technique of fermentation keeps this crispy and crunchy for longer. Wow. My mentor has 13 year old kimchi in his fridge. My mentor is not a chef. Okay. He basically is an ancient Korean medicine man. Wow. 
uh, Korean medicine isn't practiced anymore during the Japanese occupation. So he's one of the few families that actually still practices Korean medicine, which is using everyday foods to heal. It's funny, if you look at my fridge, it's like a mix of this and then like <laughs> Italian stuff. It's fun, and that, that was the idea was like, I was like, wow, these, there are these two things about prepared foods that you have that you can reach to that you don't eat all of it right when you get it. I'm so inspired by what you do. And it's like, I'm so happy we got to run into each other again. So the guests are here, like any good dinner party, we're a few minutes behind. So to start making corn cheese, one of my favorite things to eat, one of my favorite things to cook. This is my favorite way to cook corn, um, and the dome is perfect for this. I like to take corn and cook it in its husk. I haven't soaked it, I haven't done anything to it. I just take the corn like this, and I put it right into an oven, around like four to 500 degrees, and you're gonna cook it for about 15 to 20 minutes on each side. You'll start to smell it, and also you'll see this, the husk on the outside will almost char. What's happening is that the corn is steaming inside of its jacket. It really intensifies the flavor of the corn, the sweetness of the corn. I'll start my mortadelle in here first. And from here, it's really, really simple. I'm gonna saute this in a really hot pan. A little bit of olive oil. So we're getting some nice color on the mortadella here. You don't want it to get burnt or even that crispy just for that fat to kind of render out. So I'll add like a little pinch of spring onion or if you have regular white onion, that's fine as well. I'm gonna throw this in for a few more seconds just to soften this onion a bit. Onion soften, the mortadella is getting nice and crispy. And we're gonna stop that. We're gonna add the corn. I'm gonna kind of just crumble it up. And I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil to the top of this. And just let this kind of go a little bit further. You can start to see the corn starting to barely color on the top. It's already cooked, so we're not really looking to cook it further. I'm gonna give it a nice squeeze of mayonnaise. And this is just mozzarella. It's low moisture part skip mozzarella. Yeah, so that's what you want. It's nice and crispy. You can see it's it's almost like a it is almost like mac and cheese how you know it kind of is you got that crispy cheese on the outside. It's a taste of summer. This is the corn cheese. And I would definitely eat this with the white kimchi for sure. That looks amazing. It's still going. I see a bubble. It's still but now would be the time to hit it. Louis, you can, don't burn yourself. Oh my God. <laughs> Is it hot? It's perfect. It's like a fried bologna sandwich. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go make mozzarella and carrozza. We're going to do mozzarella and carrozza with uh, bunny cauda. This one, my chef Paolo taught me how to make. He's Ligurian. I think this is like, the best version of a grilled cheese you'll ever have in your life. The way that he does it um, is really interesting because there's, um, I've always seen this dish after he showed it to me the first time, I've always seen it breaded. Mm -hmm. He doesn't bread it because he likes to serve it with this sauce called bagna cauda, which is essentially just like a garlic and anchovy like sauce, like a cream almost. Mozzarella and carrozza is one of my favorite things in the world to eat. Historically when I've had this, I've just had it with like white bread. This is a Pullman loaf, but it's got some polenta in it. And I love this specific, this is one of my favorite breads. It's from She Wolf Bakery here in New York City. And the polenta has a nice like little bite to it. Can I just give a nice um, texture, a nice chew? It's a great way to use stale bread. Usually I use stale bread for this. I'll put the top back on, I kind of like give it a little smush. I like to trim off the, the corners here. So this is good to go. For the mozzarella and carrots, I like to have some milk for soaking, some flour for dredging, and also some egg for dredging. It gives a little, really quick dunk in milk here. Yeah, it's kind of like making French toast where you're kind of creating this like custard. And this bread is very tender. So if it's stale bread, you want to soak a little longer. So I go with the flour on the edges, so right there. The cool thing about this is you can kind of, if you're making a bunch of these for a party or something, mm -hmm. you can take it as far as the make the sandwiches, cut the crusts off, soak it in the milk, and then dredge it in the flour. So like I said previously, you can take them to this stage. The sandwich has been made, the edges have been cut off, the bread has been soaked in a little bit of milk, and then floured. 
Uh, my pan is like really hot. We're about like 600 degrees. I'm gonna add a good amount of oil here because we're gonna shallow fry this essentially, right? You wanna make sure that your oil is hot before you drop your sandwich in there. So from here, we'll take, go with the edges first, flip it over, and then right in. Yeah, you don't want the top of it to burn. You don't also want the bottom of it to burn. And it's like a pan fry. I don't want to be too close to the heat source, so I'm going to take it out. You can see it's already starting to color up nicely on top. I'm going to baste it again. And I'm going to give it a nice flip now. So I like to cook it on each side for a few moments, and then I like to roll the edges to kind of seal them up. And I like to lean it up against the edge of the pan, just like you're cooking a steak. And then we're just going to take that oil and just spoon it over. It's really fun to cook this. The funnest part about cooking in this oven is like maneuvering the, the food around and like finding your spots where your heat is. It's very forgiving, but it's a lot of fun. As that rests, we're gonna build our bany kind of. So I've got a piece of butter, a little bit of olive oil, and as that melts, I'm gonna add to that a couple cloves of garlic minced up and a few pieces of anchovy. And these are just gonna melt into this butter. I'm gonna add some parsley here, a good handful of parsley. And now I'll add this back to the heat and allow this to kind of do its thing for the parsley to really bloom in there. And we'll take it out, I'm gonna add a touch of cream. And then we're gonna like park it right here on the little bench here and like allow it to kind of slowly do its thing. If you look at the cheese in this, And now we have this nice beignacata here. All right, let's run this in and see what people think. This is the mozzarella and carota, so then you dip it in this. This is beignacata, which is like an anchovy cream. Oh my god. It's a fusion oh. dinner. So good.